Pelosi said Friday that it is up to the CDC to extend the moratorium, not Congress. Speaker Pelosi argues that most of the money allocated to help landlords and renters has not even been spent yet. So joining us now to talk about this is our justice correspondent, Candace Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Now, mm. the White House said that they don't have the power to extend the ban and neither does the CDC who initially called for it. So who has the power then to do anything when it comes to keeping the eviction <laughs> moratorium in place? You know, there's so much confusion around this, but here's what we do know. As you said, Nancy Pelosi said that, hey, the, the CDC is the one who has this power and they can make these decisions. But we know that the Supreme Court has already spoken. They spoke at the end of June. And what they said specifically is that there needs to be clear and specific congressional power that is carried out. So really, the Supreme Court has deferred to Congress. But meanwhile, Nancy Pelosi is deferring to the CDC. And then meanwhile, you have the... The Biden administration saying that we're just the White House. We defer to the Supreme Court, so we are going to go with what they say. So you have people that are waiting on each other in order to make things happen. And in terms of making things happen, when the Biden administration did finally speak on Thursday, it was just too late. It was hard to get people surrounding this particular idea, and they just couldn't make it happen in terms of extending this moratorium. Mm. I want to touch on that, Candace, just briefly. You know, members of the House say that the White House took too long to explain their position on extending the deadline. Meanwhile, the House moving over the weekend, really it was about Friday when they were trying to pass something. Did Congress just move too slow? Did this deadline creep up on them? I think that Congress moved way too slowly. You know why? Because we knew that this was coming. We knew that this was an extension that had happened about four times, took us out to July 31st. We also knew that the Supreme Court had spoken and said that the power lied within Congress. So in that about 30, 35 days, I'm not sure what they were thinking. It couldn't have crept on them, crept up on them so much where they didn't know it was happening. They just waited. They were waiting for the Biden administration, and they waited much too long. In addition, when the Biden administration finally did say, listen, Congress, you have to move on this, it was the day before they went on a seven-week break, a seven-week vacation. And if you want to have a lackluster result, give somebody a heavy project before they go on vacation. So what's going to happen now is that maybe they will be called back. There are a lot of other things that they have to deal with in terms of the huge infrastructure bill that you've been talking about. So maybe they will have the opportunity to speak on this. Otherwise, this is going to be a mess and one that is not unexpected. Yeah, well, people are unhappy about it, and a lot of them have been protesting in a number of ways, and they want to bring attention to this matter, including actually going to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's home where she lives to protest this. So, yeah, good. Well, well, they went to her home. Um, they they cited what was going on in the Capitol. You mentioned already that Representative Cory Bush was out there along with Ayanna Presley. Um, and so they said in the spirit of what they were doing, let's go to Nancy Pelosi's home. She lives in a mansion. She doesn't understand what's going on with the common person who is behind in their rent. And they put an eviction notice on her door, just very nicely with a couple pieces of tape, saying, you're evicted, okay? And you need to do something about this or else it's going to be a huge mess. So make something happen right now. There are about 40 protesters that arrived in her home uh, in California on Saturday. Uh, you know, and I would expect that during this week, we will see a lot more of that protesting on Capitol Hill, as well as not only in front of Nancy Pelosi's home, but other people's homes, because it did fall in the laps of the Democrats and they waited much too long. And this is why we are where we are right now. And then on the flip side of that, Candace, you know, they did wait. They tried to pass uh, a bill. House lawmakers, the Democrats tried to, did not happen. That failed very quickly. And then you have Speaker Pelosi even saying, um, you know, not a single Republican would support extending the moratorium. Let's talk about that $46 billion, though, the $46 mm -hmm. billion dollars on the table for renters. Where does that stand right now? Well, Bofta, this really is only the only saving grace that is out there, and that there is $46 billion that's on the table, about $3 billion that have gone out to renters. The problem is, and we've talked about this before, there's just no infrastructure. So Republicans are saying, listen, you don't need our support right now. We have given you money. There is money that's on the table in the amount of $46 billion. Work on it. 
create the infrastructure, give it out to the people who need it, give it out to the renters, work with the landlords. You have the money that is there, you're just not doing what you need to do. If anybody has any power right now, it would be the states. Um, because mm -hmm. the states are able to dole out this money. And of course, st some states, and we'll talk about this, have extended the moratorium in, in, in some ways. But it, the power lies within the states, and that's what the Republicans are saying now in terms of those billions of dollars. Give it out to make this happen. And you mentioned those landlords. Could they receive some of that 46 also? Because, you know, a lot of people will say they still have to pay their mortgage, and sometimes their mortgage companies only gave them six months of a period where they don't have to pay their mortgage. But the moratorium goes on past that. So it's like they're going to be not evicted, but they're going to be foreclosed on if they can't pay these mortgages because of the moratorium. Yeah, well, here's how it goes. The monies can go either directly to the landlord or in some cases directly to the renter in the case where landlords don't want to accept this money because there are thousands of landlords that don't even want this money because it has a lot of strings attached in terms of when they can possibly evict a potential tenant. So when, when it comes to that, yes, the money can go directly to the landlord. In fact, that's the best idea to give it directly to them. But also, People are saying, why don't the landlord and the renters, as much as they can, work with each other in order to figure out a way to make these payments in a timely manner, maybe stretched over in a way. While they're waiting for the money, uh, Congress has been encouraging landlords and different advocacy groups have been encouraging landlords and renters to work it out on their own. Because while the money is on its way, like you said, something still has to be worked out. There has to be an exchange of money somewhere or everybody, landlords and renters are going to be in dire straits. Well, hopefully they can work together better than what's happening in Congress on both sides of the aisle, right? Uh, Candace, there's other money that has already been delivered to families in the form of child tax credit payment. Speak on that for a bit before we go to break. Well, you know, what's interesting about these child tax pay credit payments is that they're supposed to help families get out of poverty. But if we look at the math here, even though some families might receive towards the end of the year upwards of $3,600, if they're behind in rent, $12,000, $15,000, it really kind of negates what's going on there in terms of trying to help families out of poverty. So the reason why this is important is because a lot of people are banking on this credit, but when we look at the math, it just doesn't make sense. There's just so much confusion in trying to help people, but doing some things on the other side that actually hinders the progress that's being made. So while this ch child tax care credit is a good thing, it's almost canceled out by what's going on with this moratorium that ended on Saturday. And we know people of color will be hit the hardest. Candace Kelly, thank you so much. In addition to local and state information, you can find more on www.consumerfinance.gov. Again, thank you so much, Candace Kelly.